I hear someone. Well, looky who we got here. Looky, looky who I got. It's fucking cold, guy. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you know what they say when it's cold. That's power season. Oh, yeah, we got boost. We got boost. All the boost. I'll probably hit more boost today, then. Oh, man. Nah. It's been liking cold. I'm sure it has there, pal. Still a daily driver. Well, and a certain amount of horsepower we'll find out today. Oh, yeah. No, we're... I'm really anticipating to see what it does because it spun the tires before. Mm-hmm. Now we got a new dyno. We have some some grippy rollers because they're still in the brand new session. They're starting to get some Warren marks on, but they're still brand new. I think it'll be pretty fun. They've been doing pretty good for gripping. <clears throat> One thing I know everybody sees about straps, I'm trying something new. Uh, I'm gonna do a pull if the car turned down. Um, I had it brought to my attention to run straight straps tight and run my limiting straps in the back crossed. So we're gonna see how that does. Uh, I do have intentions of adding more straps at a later time in the front, but for right now, that's what I got. Um, lower map on this is 40 pounds that's what he's been daily yep. driving it on e85 obviously just to give you a quick rundown if you guys are just checking in at the channel this is travis's 19 sti up here we have a 72 75 next gen precision turbo ams intake fic 2150s um, we do have 8 an feed 6 an return fuel lines running to the front from the tank we have a radium double pump painter two 525s no 450s Two 450s. So they'll be tapped pretty quick. Yeah, that is a limiting factor on this car is gonna be the fuel system. Uh, we've definitely leaned on this car pretty hard over the years. Um, maybe one day, oh boy, we'll upgrade this fuel system a little more. Maybe, I mean, I've, I've I mean, it's working right now. It's been making power and it's been dependable. So we've been into, if I remember right, 85% injector duty cycle at the 40 pound region, which is where he leaves it at. He does have a Honda map. Um, on the hotter map, we I was just looking, it was like 90% injector duty cycle. So definitely towards the end of the fuel system there. He already knows that. Everybody knows that. The good um, news is they just got cleaned and came back showing that they flow a little higher than what they are uh, labeled as. <laughs> hey, that's that's they're a plus. Flowing, they're flowing about 2280 right now See? instead of 2150. So. Uh, we do have a base pressure up a little bit more on this, but at the end of the day, we got to keep in mind we have two Wabros and they have a relief pressure which is usually around that 110 region so gives us about 50 pounds of boost there to work with you know when you start leaning on it over 50 pounds and definitely um you don't want to lean on your fuel system because yeah. uh, you won't have a motor so uh when you trade me turbos god i know this is the turbo i wanted <laughs> on my forester was a 7275 but they're fucking back ordered right now yeah. and now travis is over like you want to trade yeah, you know my kit is done pal it is done for, fabrications for that other turbo right for the other turbo. It, it essentially it bolts right up essentially it does bolt because i had the right 70, up. i had the 76 75 on here before that's a big difference there but i don't got a 75 that's puny land hey hey that's great that's the small guy turbo here it is a great streetable <laughs> turbo this thing has like 10 more pounds at 5,000 rpms in mind us yeah it's to give you an idea nuts. i think this one was 18 pounds at 5,000 rpms and mine is like eight pounds yeah that, that sounds about accurate so 888 Mustang, when we did the math, came out at like a thousand and three and a half. So 888 Mustang, that's what we're going to 888.6. Okay. So I did make some uh, additions to my DinoJet. I was having some issues yesterday. Um, I reached out to DinoJet and they're saying that my issue was it was reading voltage somehow through the dyno, which in the instructions, it didn't tell me to add a ground from the dyno to the building, which I did today. And then I also got a ground from the dyno to the car, hoping that we have solved all those issues. The issue that I was having guys, it physically just wouldn't even show a graph. It was just throwing an error code for brake temp, which this doesn't even have a brake temp sensor because this doesn't have eddy brakes. So hopefully that's all solved today. We'll see, we're gonna leave the car turned down, do the first hit on his street map here at 40 pounds. And then from there, we'll turn it back up to the hot map, see what it makes. and. See if he gets a number today. Yeah, you going for what, four cars over a thousand this month? Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, we'll see if all 72, 75 can do it and if your fuel system can do it. Yeah, yeah, that's important. Because uh, <laughs> we have two limiting factors. We're gonna have to lean on old girl and the fuel system. I got Not to mention we just have a stage four in here. Yeah. You've already proven that the stage four is one of the- It's one of the most best. durable blocks Dude. that you built. 
for the price and what you get, this is my one of my favorite blocks. But it's not warranty. There's no warranty. That's the thing. So see? It, it's durable, but once it goes, it goes. I mean, I don't have warranty on any block. I do, 2,500 miles, but then you get your power tune and you don't have warranty. Yeah. So, all right, I already let it warm up. It's cold as dick in here. Yep. I'm gonna get the scene fired back up, turn the fans on. Uh, I'm gonna drive real quick, just to make sure everything's good. Uh, I'll probably tip into it just to make sure the car is stable, and then I'll do the pull from there, which you guys will just see me do a pull. Right there. Woo! 
Oh boys, adding another one to the list. What's that add? That's, that's for this month. 1,066, boys. Look at that. 831 foot pounds of torque. It still spun right here, right in the mid range. A little bit sketchy, but the straps definitely help. Having those back there being straight, I definitely do believe helped. But still spinning, guys. That's the first time I ever had a problem spinning. And we did on the Mustang with this car as well. It made 888 on the Mustang on the map it's on right now. And it, he heard him earlier, 13% on that would have been 1,003. And we didn't get a chance to rev it all the way out. So there we have it, boys. 1,000 wheel street car that he's been daily driving. It's got 6,000 miles on it at this power level right now. That, that's awesome. Damn. There you go, my dude. Daily driver. 1,000 horsepower. Yeah. Dude, that's Have you that's seen how legit. many miles have been put on the car since? Yeah, I told him about 6,000 miles. Roughly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm stoked. On my little baby stage four. Yep. Which has proven itself time after time. And honestly, I feel it is such a great fit for a higher horsepower street car. You know, obviously every motor's gonna have its limits. They're all gonna have a lifespan, so don't take me wrong and take me by the fact that a thousand wheel car is gonna live forever. I always tell you guys, if you beat the shit out of something, it's gonna break. It doesn't matter how good the parts are. And Travis already knows that. You know, yeah. he enjoys the car, don't get me wrong, but he's not out there light the light beating the shit out of it. No. And I and think these- I'm not racing people every day. Like, these turbo kits really do help us stay out of trouble, to be honest with you. Yes, uh, that and honestly, a lot of the times, especially when with this car, if someone tries to race me, I'm like, dude, I don't have enough road in front of me yeah. to even get into boost. So it's like- It's not worth it. It's not even worth the gas. Dude, guys, this 7275, I'll show you why I wanted it for the Forester, because it is a phenomenal turbo. So we have both his graphs here. Now, if I bring Jeff's up, which you guys just saw that made 1170 on the 7685, you can see here, I'm gonna highlight it, the spool difference from a 7685 to a 7275. I mean, this is huge for a street car here. That's about, what are we looking at there? 1,000 RPMs? Uh, about 750. 750 RPMs yeah. before it's at the same spot. Don't get me wrong, I love the 7685. Obviously, I mean, look at it up top. Uh, these cars both have the same camshafts. Inevitably, they're gonna start laying down as you go up in RPM, which our RPM ending here is 9,000. So no matter what, Travis, he has a nice fat power band there for the street. And if it hadn't spun on a street map here, we're definitely right in the efficiency of this turbo where it's really happy at 40 pounds there. This would have continued its way right to that 900 mark. And I mean, for a street car, 900 is plenty. 900 is more than enough. I know you have ripped that 900 on the street. Yeah, no, I sent you a video of it the other day. And that shit ripped. Cause oh. uh, I went and put ethanol in the car yeah. and I was at like E68. And I was like, oh yeah, it doesn't kick into the actual like ethanol map until at least 70% ethanol content. And so <laughs> I was like, fuck it, I'll do a little bit of a pull, the car will be happy. And then it hit full boost, 42 pounds, 900 and got the a little torque. squirrely. It was terrible. The torque though. Yeah. 834, is that what it was? 831. Yeah. Jeff's car with 1170 made 775 torque. It's just, that's 7275, that shit fucks. It's a monster. Precision, you outdid yourself with that Absolutely. one. That's a good turbo. So definitely shout out to them. Shout out to my guys over at DinoJet. Jerry, if you are watching this, he's been helping me with this dyno since I put it in. Phenomenal customer support. I gotta tell you guys, they've been nothing but amazing to me, honestly. Um, obviously I bought this dyno, it's brand new, but I didn't buy it directly from them brand new. I brought it from someone else that had it new. So even for them to have the support they do, it's phenomenal. The grounds definitely looks like it resolved our issue. So hopefully we don't have that issue anymore of it having some back feet of voltage going through. Um, but at the end of the day, another thousand wheel Subaru done by us. Yep. Motor, tuned, strayed, did the turbo kit on it. I definitely gotta say, uh, so straight did the up pipe exhaust turbo mount. Yep. But ETS custom built my header. That is true. Uh, it is an ETS V2 big tube header. This is one of on. one. Yes. So uh, this is, they make this now where you can have a DIY turbo kit. Yes. If you guys look, I don't know how good it is under here right now with lighting, but 
turn on my camera. You can see we have a V2 header, but it comes over to a V-band, so you have a, a DIY style if you want to for yourself, where you can make an up pipe. But end of the day, ETS header, ETS intercooler, and as always, our favorite, the AMS intake manifold doing work. So good. But really happy for you. One of my day ones, Travis has been with me doing this since, been here since the damn near the beginning. One. He's one of my very first cars ever tuned was this car. And it's just, it's, I couldn't be happier for you because I know this is a hurdle that all of us want in a high power Subaru world. A thousand is that elusive number that everybody wants. Yep. And you know, at the end of the day, we knew it was there, but it's hard to claim. You know, everybody kind of judges the Mustang Dyna we had before. It was a great tuning tool, a great tool in general. It got me where I am today, so I can't be mad at it. But it's just nice. End of the day, I have my dyno jet. I couldn't be happier, even though I, I've dealt with my little kinks of getting it installed. But at the end of the day, here we are, made the 1066. Yeah. You got a thousand wheel street car, my dude. Also couldn't have done it without Johnny. That is true. Just rebuild I can't my transmission. Forget about my boy, Johnny Trans, which you guys all know. He got our banners made. He helped me spend so many cold nights here at the dyno. Shout out to you, Johnny. He does all our transmission rebuilds. He just did a full refresh on this trans because obviously all, new all that torque took your fourth gear out there, pal. Yep, all new synchros, new fourth gear. It twisted my input shaft 10 degrees. So you know, that replaced. You might have to look into an upgraded gear set here, my my dude. Yeah, it's gonna be. Because um, that 834 foot pounds is gonna say. I was already looking See into it. So. It's just saving up for it now. Yeah. So it's it'll be getting bought. Uh, next goal, get this car into the eights. That's a high goal. Now they, uh, but it, I mean, it makes the power. If we can get the transmission to cooperate, <clears throat> not lose a gear, <laughs> then, and, uh, then as as, you know, we'll work our way my, down there. As long as I can hit my shifts on my flat yeah, foot. What's going on here, Miss Shift Jimmy? Um, well, we tightened up everything. I did new bushings for the uh, that's why you've been daily luggage. driving it. Yeah, I'm trying to get used to that manual again. Yeah, Dry, going to a uh, automatic is terrible. Dog, I enjoy my auto every day, it's nice. Oh, but it is also, nice. but then when you get back you in get these, these, you still drive these all the yeah. time. Anybody that has a daily driver will understand. But I'm going to get this thing unloaded. All we have to do is our two hits today, and we're done, my dude. Yeah. Just load stoked. the same maps we already had on it and go. Congrats. Let's go. Pedal to the ground, pedal to the ground, pedal to the ground. 